Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Matt Capper. This is a video on Diablo Immortal. Today I want to talk to you about legendaries, everything you need to know about legendary artifacts in this game, and what to do, how to do them, how to equip them, when to unequip them, what to choose, what not to choose. You name it, we're going to try to go through for most of you who are veterans of this game. This will not be news to you, but for some of you this may give some of those wanted questions, especially those who are new to the Diablo world. This might help you out, so without further ado, let's get right into it and let's start with what is a legendary artifact? Well, uh, quite simply, they are artifacts that have this reddish orange uh, backdrop. They are legendary. They call themselves as such. And the most important thing is they have the socket. They have extra attributes. And this is going to increase your combat score and, of course, increase your uh, individual items. Uh, individual stats so uh, there's six main ones they're on the right hand side the left hand side cannot get legendary however the left hand side will have your set uh, set items which the right side cannot have so for example I have a set here uh, I have mount banks uh, untouchable mount bank I have two of them as you can see it's giving me this bonus right here if I get four I can get this and six will get this so that's something we'll obviously look towards so uh, so you don't have to worry about, oh, well, geez, they're legendary items. What about those set items? I remember those from the original Diablo, uh, and they were on the, they were for everything. Well, now it's the right-hand side is your legendary, your left-hand side is your set items. So that is the first thing. The second thing to note is you can see I have upgrades. These are currently at six. I can't upgrade them anymore. If we go over to the blacksmith, the blacksmith at level six will give me a bonus attribute on that uh, on that slot upgrades are slot based not weapon based so for example here you can see it needs paragon 20 what i mean by that is if i go in here and i replace the item i have with this item i transfer over you see the six and the gem stay in that slot and so that makes it if i if i am keeping multiple items for multiple uh, loadouts then i have an easy and swift way to deal with that without having to worry about um, you know ranking up both and spending all the extra time and energy to get both at that level that stays with the slot so now you're thinking well I'm level 30 or level 35 I've already got a couple legendary I like those items a new one dropped at the same slot but I don't like that attribute for example a little lance I have or I dropped I don't want the little lance because I really like the bristle I like what it does so in that case First thing you're going to do if you drop a new legendary, and I'm sure you figured it out by now, but you're going to get identified the uh, any place that there's a scroll. Small towns are better than large than West March if you're going and doing this rep repeatedly. Rather than have to run around a smaller town, everything's a lot closer together. Just as a kind of a, a life hack to speed up your gameplay. But uh, that scroll right there is where you're going to go in and get it identified. Then we're going to go to this squiggly right here, and that's the essence transfer. Uh, merchant I guess she is and if we go in here we'll be able to see what she is so you see essence transfer there's two things you can do you can extract and inherit with extract if you have an item that you have no, that you're not equipping and you have yet to extract from the legendary you can do that and what that does is allows you to have it available with the essence transfer merchant so these two helmets for example were previous helmets I had I didn't need them anymore, so I came here and I did the extraction. The extraction destroys the item, but keeps the essence, keeps the ability. So what that means for you is then you can come in here and inherit. So now you got a new drop, you're 10 levels higher than your previous drop in that slot, for example, we'll say here. And so I want to, uh, but I want that ability. So I got the bristle, I don't want the bristle, I want little lance, but I want the better stats that are on this particular drop you go to inherit you choose and you go okay well i've already i've already extracted little lance because that was my previous one i did the extraction now i can actually imbue the uh, or inherit that new ability so now lo and behold this weapon is little lance if i don't like that i can send it back to the original the original is actually long palm or i can choose any other particular one that i've already extracted so this means all you need to do is get each one of those styles once to have it available to you 
got to remember Diablo and Blizzard, they're going to be upgrading and balancing all the time. So never think that there's a particular item that you'll never use. There'll be a point where all of these are probably going to be useful to you. So you always want to have them in your arsenal ready to go in case there comes a time when you need to use them. Okay. So that's how you're going to manage your, your assets. Now, what are we looking for when we're looking for upgrades? Well, thankfully, uh, this game's pretty good at telling you. There'll be a green up arrow if it's something worthwhile. But uh, if you want to look here, there's a couple things. So we're going to take a look at this. This is my lowest one. How do I know it's my lowest one? Well, it's a Paragon 3 um, requirement, which means it is. It, it, I was able to wear it from Paragon 3. I'm now Paragon 15. So needless to say, it's a little bit older than some of my other gear. For example, uh, my, my uh, shoulder here is actually a uh, 7. And I think my helm is a 15, right? Oh, 9. Okay. When I say 15, I mean 9. Oh, there's a 15. Bristle is one I just got. It's the last legendary item I just dropped. It's, it was actually a long palm. But as you can see by the little squiggly here, these are all uh, abilities that I've inherited onto these items. So that's the first thing you want to pay attention to is just how much more powerful it is. Well, that's going to be the, the first set here, the attributes and the magic. That's going to be independent of each weapon so as a weapon drops you see this one has fortitude strength critical hit chance this here has fortitude willpower you see it's a lot lower it has damage done to undead and critical hit damage increased by six percent uh the only reason i'm actually carrying this one with me is because i'm lazy and when i go into battlegrounds i like for having a little lance i don't have to go all the way down here to to uh transfer essence just to go into battlegrounds and then whip out i should probably feed this one because this is better even though it's a single versus a double um but no big deal the next thing is speaking of single double is some uh only get one item on the magic they'll get two attributes and one magic and that's uh i don't know if there's the i'm sure there's special nomenclature we're gonna we're gonna go to basketball <laughs> that's the double single um that's your Dennis Rodman. Lots of rebounds, not a lot of points. Uh, but you can also get a double-double. So two eye attributes, two magic, and a triple-triple, which I do have one here. You can see there's three attributes, three magic. I believe triple-triple's the highest. Maybe there's a quad. I don't know. I didn't play enough of Diablo 3, and the mind isn't that sharp anymore to be able to tell you, but I'm pretty sure triple's the highest. Uh, so then it just becomes what are the stat main stats you get. So eventually, especially when you start slowing down in those Paragon levels and it and it's longer periods of time between upgrades, then, you know, you're going to want to try to get as many of those triples as possible, but without sacrificing some of those main stats and abilities. Uh, and, and like I said, the game's pretty good by giving you the green arrows to tell you what to upgrade or not. The next piece of that is your socket. Now in that socket is going to be gems. I'm not going to cover greater gems or legendary gems in this video, but just know that you're going to want to pick a mixture of low and high level ones. Why? Because the high level ones are the most coveted, but they're also the most ridiculously expensive to upgrade. The one star and two star are considerably cheaper to upgrade. So you'll be able to run through those abilities a lot better. So how do you choose? Ah, uh, well, it's up to you. If you're an absolute whale, get everything to five star if you can, and away you go. I do have three five star. I might even step that back to, to two five star because there's no way I'm going to level these past two. Uh, Howler's Call, um, Phoenix Ashes, although honestly, I would like to get Phoenix Ashes up to three. It is a long cooldown, which is painful, but at least this would give me a heal. Uh, and then I have, uh, I have the... Uh, blessing of the worthy uh they're all two two star five star you can get up to five star five star the, the, the most expensive of the game uh and then you see on this side here these are the ones that are cheaper i have a level four a rank four a rank five and a rank three uh and these are just putting in here i haven't even decided if these are the ones um if these are the ones i want to keep just yet but they're relatively cheap to upgrade uh, there's not a whole lot of resource involved in upgrading the first couple levels. So I'm not too worried about that. Maybe I will. I do like the fact that, um, um, you know, I, I, I like some of these abilities, especially like this one, uh, the elite monster piece allows me to riff runs and elite just gives me that extra damage, but it's kind of, it's kind of a weak ability compared to some of the top tier gems. So, uh, ultimately I might, I'm, I'm, I've stopped leveling up 
gems, and I might replace some of those right one if I get a good one or two star of some of the more coveted. If I get a Blessing of the Worthy that's a two star, that might be the better option for me, uh, which is probably in a big tangent and meant for a legendary gem video sometime in the long distant future. So, uh, so that's a just about it. There's one more thing you need to know, and that's the slot. We talked about upgrading, and you can see that I had to get up here. But at level 6, it does give you a bonus, and that's what's happening. Oh, well, first I should talk about the Sacred Fire. That's the actual item. So the Bristle gives me this legendary ability, in this particular case, Hurls Waves of Flame, uh, which gives me uh, kind of gives me an AoE damage. What it's really good for is keeping up your, uh, your kill count for the extra XP. A uh, very big deal in Rift Dungeons if you're if you're flash farming uh, Rift Dungeons for XP to get those 100, 200, or if you're in the um, in the library, which is a really good place, you can get. We had thousand over a thousand, twelve hundred going on last night. Uh, this just helps with that because I can now have a, a screen length AOE to be able to keep those keep those modifiers up. Uh, which is why I have it on for my PvE, even though I use a little lance in PvP. Uh, the last thing is, is that I'm upgrading the slots here. One through five gave me this, the vitality and strength. The bonus happens at six. And I like I like the elite enemy bonus because again, uh, Crusader is a PvE machine, and this just helps me deal with those uh, those blue enemies that can be a pain in the butt especially in those higher levels when you're really pushing things say you're in hell to say you're in you know the rift challenge that sort of thing so uh, that's the last thing you do and that's just the socket upgrade so that's all i have for you for legendary weapons uh if you ever want to see what all the abilities are it's really simple you can come in here and this is how i would decide how to how and what i want to build you can read what each of these do so what do i really want well look at this enemies affected by my sacred chain are pulled together yes please i wouldn't mind having that for pvp shield charge maximum charges increased by one i do use shield charge so that would be nice this is my favorite one arrow keeper which i want which is the inspiration from holy banner moves with you so you want that banner uh, that standard that you place with the extra crit damage to follow you around. That is an amazing ability, and that's the one that I want the most. Uh, the beacon's interesting, and the ornament is interesting, and I'm sure they're going to be useful. Uh, but as you can see here, you know, you can actually find out what all the different abilities are and make that decision on where to go. But my, my obviously the most important thing is just extract them all. The last thing is, is what do you do if you don't need it anymore? What do you, what do, you do when you no longer need to have uh, have these items? Well, uh, it's going to pain me because now I can't be lazy anymore. But this is the last thing you get to do. You just salvage the item. It gives you a glowing shard. This is upgrade material to help you upgrade your legendary items. Uh, once you've already extracted one, and, and if it's not your most powerful weapon, just salvage it. At some point, you're going to be keeping it up because you can go into the uh, the gear, the armory here, and you can create these loadouts for you, which allows you to quickly go back and forth between. Uh, but in the early, honestly, I think you're fine just extracting the, the extra materials and sacrificing it like we uh, broke my heart, did it right there. So that's all I have for you for legendary items. Uh, I hope it was useful for the new and beginner player. If you did enjoy it or just enjoyed my stupid silly face, please consider giving me a thumbs up and a follow. Other than that, I want to thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you. Please, as always, be kind to one another. Be safe out there. And we'll see you in the next video.